Happy Friday, everyone. It's Kate Richberg, and welcome to Free Tip Friday here on beadshop.com. Uh, it looks like my screen is a little, my camera's a little dirty. Let me clean you a little bit here. Hang on. Let me spray. I'm like those ASMR videos on like TikTok where they like do your makeup and stuff. There we go. I think, yeah, that's a little better. I'm going to clean my other camera here, right here. There we go. <laughs> well, I hope everybody's having a good Friday. I'm having a good Friday. Gosh, didn't this week go by quickly? Went by quickly for me. I'll tell you what. Wow. It's Friday already. Um, Friday, the 8th of March, if you're watching this live, my goodness. Yes, I'm wearing the Drea made dancer earrings, my friend. Um, yes. And I wanted to wish every, uh, everybody, all women and women identifying a very happy international women's day. Here we are to all of my friends. Um, very excited. Uh, to put a spotlight on us. Every day is Women's Day though, right? We run the world, don't we? I think we do. <laughs> it's great to have all of you all here. Um, it is a beautiful day, sunny day. We've had some rain. We can always use rain here in California, but it's a great day today. So uh, yes, these uh, Drea made I had to get them. You know, Drea does sell her earrings periodically. And in one of her sales, uh, I had to um, grab these. And yes, friends, do remember that daylight savings in the U.S. for us, daylight savings starts on Sunday. Uh, we spring forward. We set our clocks forward. Um, it's great. Uh, so we'll be getting darker later. That's great. So spring has definitely sprung here, which is awesome. I'm happy about that. Spring is my favorite season. I don't know what your favorite season is, but spring, yeah, that, you know what? That didn't work. Let me keep wiping here. Um, spring is my, definitely my favorite season. Um, followed a close second by fall. I mean, I, I like fall too, but spring is my favorite for sure. Um, I love all the spring foliage, the flowers and stuff, but I do love fall. Um, you know, the leaves changing and stuff, but that'll come as it comes. Um, you know, you can follow Drea on, uh, her Insta. Um, Instagram is probably the best place. Um, I don't know if Drea is watching right now. Uh, but Janice, you can probably find, um, Drea's Instagram somewhere on Insta. Um, it might be Drea Bunny maybe on Instagram. I'm not sure. Um, we'll ask her the next time she's on with me. Um, but yeah, they are terrific. I love them. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a little bit better. I'm going to spray these one more time. I'm perpetually cleaning my glasses. I don't know if you're like that as well. I'm just going to really spray them while I tell you some more announcements. Uh, we launched the Compassion Suede today. Um, I'm super excited to share that with you. Janice sourced it. We used to carry it by the spool, right? Um, which uh, we loved. Um, we couldn't get it. Um, and Janice found it again. Um, it's a little nicer than what we used to carry, honestly. Um, I really, really love it. Uh, you can see a bunch of our projects, um, the traveler bracelet. There's a bunch of fun things that we did with it. I'm going to show you some kind of new ideas. Um, I just kind of riffed yesterday afternoon when I took a break from shipping your button orders. <laughs> um, I did a few riffs, so I'm going to show you that today, what I'm doing with it. Um, but you can use it really just about anywhere um, you use leather cord, right? Anywhere. Um, I'm pretty pleased. I'm really glad um, that uh, Janice found it. And the colors are really terrific. Um, 
Let's see. Maybe this did the trick. We'll see. Yeah, that's a lot better. Really get a lot of spray on there, I guess, is the trick. Um, okay. Um, anyway, cheers to all of you. A little bit of coffee this morning. Because it is 1042 on the West Coast. So you can find all of the Compassion Suede. It is faux suede. It's vegan suede. Um, so you'll see that. You'll see all the colors that we're carrying. Um, we also, I wanted to tell you, our button sale is going to be on through the weekend. And then that's it. We have just a few, very few styles left. I'm going to try and use some of the small ones today. Uh, just a few actually of the small ones are left and just a smattering of the larger ones. The rest of those, the orders, um, some of you placed a few orders yesterday. Those will be shipped out today and then we'll be all caught up. So I got them, I got them out pretty quickly. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, in between doing a bunch of other stuff because it's tax season, my friends. Um, so we got all that done. Um, so that's done. Button sale announcement. Third announcement is bead retreat. I told you I'd give you an update. So, and I know Cynthia is going to be announcing this on her um, uh, golden hour streams. I think she's got a golden hour coming up today. And I know that she and Azalea broadcast on Sunday as well. So as you know, or maybe you don't know, um, our Emily is not joining us this year. We're going to miss her uh, so much. But Cynthia will be joining us, Cynthia and Azalea from Green Girl Studios, Cynthia Thornton and her daughter, Azalea Ogden. Um, uh, they're going to be joining us uh, at our uh, annual uh, show, a bead retreat uh, in San Juan Batista, California. Um, it's in August and the dates, let me make sure I get this right. The dates are Friday, August 16th. You arrive at about 4 p.m. that Friday. Uh, you drop all of your things off. Uh, we have a little uh, wine and cheese or non-wine if you don't partake. A little social hour. We have dinner. Um, we have a meet and greet. Uh, we have some beating time, maybe a fun activity. And then uh, Saturday, Sunday, into Monday, and everybody leaves Monday by 2 p.m. Uh, and that goes uh, Friday, August 16th through Monday, August 19th. All of the, uh, everything's included, your lodging, your food, um, all the activities, everything. Uh, Janice will be there. I will be there. Cynthia and Azalea will be there. Cynthia is cooking up something special uh, for you folks. The theme is color, right? Uh, we're going to be doing kind of colors and patinas, um, working with color. Uh, Cynthia is going to be doing uh, patinas on her Green Girl uh, pewter pieces. I'm going to be doing patinas on metal. I'm going to have a whole series of different like metal shapes and stuff. We're going to be doing some of my traditional metal smithing patinas that I do on my metal work uh, that you can then incorporate into your work. Janice is going to be doing some nature walks and stuff like that, um, picking out some colors in nature and then looking to translate those into beads and then into your work. So it's really going to be fun. It's really laid back. You know, if you're concerned about not knowing anyone and you're like, oh, I don't know anyone, you're going to know everyone within five minutes of being there. Don't be afraid, right? We're already friends through this medium, right? Um, all rooms are private. You don't have to worry about sharing with a roommate or anything. We made that change a few years ago. So it's all private rooms. Information is going to go out at the beginning of next week. And signups uh, are going to start. I think we're going to put signups out maybe the latter part of next week. I think they're going to go up. They're definitely going up next week. Um, they'll be in the newsletter, uh, not before Wednesday. 
for sure um, because everything has to get proved and all of that. So, but I've got everything confirmed, dates, pricing, all of that, it's all confirmed. So it's almost ready. So stay tuned, but we wanted to give you some heads up. Uh, the retreat uh, fills up quickly. So you just have to pay a deposit. All of your retreat money is not due all at the same time. Uh, there are 22 spots. Okay. So we take 22 participants. Um, and, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. We have a great time. So if you do want to join us, make sure that you stay tuned to our newsletter. Um, we'll put the retreat, uh, spots will probably go live around noon. Um, uh, I'm guessing around Thursday. Uh, I'm guessing don't quote me on it. Um, but sometime around that time. Okay. Stay tuned to the newsletter. I'll have an update for you on Wednesday on my live. Okay. Um, but we're super excited to welcome you again. Um, another, uh, update on the France retreat. I still have those two spots available and it's not too late to sign up. Okay. So you can go over to, um, uh, uh, soul stirring retreats. Hold on. I know I have it here somewhere. Um, soulstirringretreats.com. And I'm over at La Cascade. I'd love to see you folks over there. There's a link to it on our homepage on beadshop.com. Two spots available. My mom already started uh, making everyone's notebooks. So uh, it's going to be really, really fun. So I'd love for you to beat in France with me. Uh, I just got my passport in. So <laughs> I am I am so ready to go. We're going to have such a great time. So um, if you're thinking about going, the cutoff date is uh, starting soon. So or it's coming soon. So if you're thinking about going, uh, I'd love, love to have you join me. So, um, so that's what's happening there. All right. So let's get to our um, ultra suede, shall we? Uh, I've got something else brewing, but, uh, I'm not going to spill the beans quite yet. If you follow my Instagram, there's some photos. Uh, I let Janice know, let my mom know, um, it has to do with a little art space that I'm working on here in Fresno. Very exciting, but stay tuned to my Insta, stay tuned to the lives. I'll spill the beans, uh, to you folks soon, but I want everything finalized before I do. So, uh, but it's very exciting. Uh, and it also involves you folks. You'll be seeing that too. Very exciting. Uh, I know, cryptic, vague, so vague. Uh, let me share with you, of course, you can find everything bead shop related, my friends, all of our social. Hit us up at beadshop.com, Facebook, Insta, Pinterest, questions. Uh, give us a shout out at info at beadshop.com. Uh, Drea always answers those questions for you. So, um, shoot us an email there. Okay. Questions, problems, anything. Don't messenger, messenger us on social or post those questions on our social platforms because we may not see them. We don't really monitor those inboxes and stuff. Best way to reach us is directly through email, right? Fastest, easiest, you'll get a response. We don't uh, work on weekends. We try and unless there's really something going on, um, we may glance at it, but if it's not an emergency, we're not gonna pick it up. Right. So, um, Monday through Friday, regular business hours, we'll get back to you. All right. So, um, uh, but rest assured we will get back to you. All right. And if there's an ish, we will, um, we always take care of you. We take care of you, you know, you're not dealing with a big corporation. You're dealing with like four people, right? We always make it good. We always make it good for you. I know. Wait, what? Well, yeah. Okay. So don't tell anyone. There's a really super cool art space here in Fresno. While I get the, while I get the ultra suede out, I'll tell you. Really cool art space that's full of art studios here in Fresno. And, uh, there's, uh, it's really great. It has about 60 different artists there. Um, all kinds of different art, really cool. Um, and so I'm going to get a studio space there. I know 
I haven't had my own studio space in a couple of years. I mean, I have studio space here, but it's not quite the same when you have it here at home, right? It's not a place that you actually go to and focus and, you know, I mean, you know, you can go in and like, I don't know, you know, take a nap or do something, right? It's not a studio space where you're like focused. So, um, so I'm super excited uh, about having a new studio space. It's just small and it's communal. You have your own little space and stuff, but it's going to be really awesome. There's like potters and photographers and all kinds of cool stuff. So more info about that coming. Not to, not finalized, almost finalized. So I don't want to sp spill the beans too much, but you folks will see it. Uh, we're going to broadcast from there. We're going to do some fun stuff from there. Um, a lot of cool, cool things. So it's going to be um, super cool. I love being part of a creative community and there are some killer artists here in the Central Valley of California. So, um, so I'm super excited, super excited uh, to make that happen. So, um, and the interaction, as Jana says, uh, the interaction is great. And there's some really fantastic artists, um, fiber artists and uh, ceramicists. And um, I don't know, we met and like some younger, uh, like, younger, I sound super old, the younger generation is there. But, you know, I, I think it's pretty cool, um, you know, to have because, you know, I'm 57 and there's like some, you know, the kids who are like in their 20s, you know, it's awesome to see what um, like the different styles of what people are doing and everything. So I think it's awesome. So, um, so yeah. So who knows? Who knows who you'll meet on the lives, right? Who all pull in to feed with me. You never know. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be good times. Anyway, I'll let you know more as it comes. Uh, anyway. So I did, I spilled the beans a little bit, but you'll know a little bit more as it, as it comes to fruition. Uh, okay, so uh, here we are, here's some ultra suede. Let me uh, talk to you about some of the colors and we'll look at the size and the thickness and all of that. Um, the ultra suede is super supple and really pretty and really strong. Um, I just, I love it. Um, comes in a variety of colors. I don't know. We have nine, maybe different ones. I'll pull them all out so you can see them. I love this olive. I love this red is kind of a brick red. It looks a little more orange on the screen. It's not quite that orange. It's a little darker brick, I think. All the compassion suede is in our just in category. Um, I have four yard lengths here. We are selling it by the yard now. We used to sell it by the spool, okay? So, um, but now we're selling it by the yard so you can get as little or as much as you want. And, um, and yeah, no knots, no slicing, uh, at least that I've found. Uh, we'll do our very best, like if you order multiple lengths, it'll come, like if you order three yards, it'll come in a three yard length, okay? So here's everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine different colors, okay? Whoops, here we go, All right? Um, and so we call it compassion suede because it's vegan, okay? So it's not animal-based. It is... Uh, vegan leather. And there's a question, is this the same as the ultra suede? It's the same in that it is not leather, but it's thicker. Okay. So let me measure this for you so you can see this. It is in thickness and I don't want to squeeze it too tightly. Here you go. You can see that end. Not squeezing. Let 
Yeah, it's about, I'm going to go in a few different places. It's about a millimeter in thickness. 1.3, a little further down. Let me do this blue. It may vary by color. This feels a little thicker, but it's not. It's about one millimeter, right? Yeah, we're looking more for ultra suede because our ultra suede, the source is drying up. I don't know if it has to do with manufacturing issues because the ultra suede lace, that source dried up. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully we'll be able to continue to get it. Um, the gray is a little heavier. Can you see that? It's a little, feels a little bit thicker. Um, but yeah, they're really beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, uh, a stable source. Um, I sure love this gray. Um, I'm really into gray right now. I don't know why so much, but it's really a great color. Again, the camera is kind of bright. I'm not sure why it's so bright, um, but it's uh, the colors are a little deeper uh, than what you're seeing on the screen. Just a touch. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it's just my screen is looking bright. Anyway, anyway, uh, super affordable, not super expensive, um, really a, a priced well. So, um, yeah, what's not to love? So I was playing around with it yesterday. Uh, and I want to show you, it's really nice for braiding. So let me show you what I was working on. Um, and you can use it in place in any of our projects that we used the ultra suede lace or the compassion suede. Look at this black. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? You could really, um, you could really make a cool choker on this. Yeah, it's 45 cents a yard, right? It's really a great price. I, I really, I dig it. All right, I'm going to keep these out. Get these here, the screen. And then let me arrange what I've got here. So much ultra suede. All right, here we go. And then let me zoom out just to touch and let's take a look at what I've got here. All right, let me straighten that out. Okay, so I was playing around with three different things. Drea sent me this design off of Insta and I really liked it. And you may have seen it on your Insta feed. It's this really cute braid and the person who braided it did it with um, Chinese knotting cord, different sizes of Chinese knotting cord. But I thought it would be, and can you see on the back? Look, I love how the ultra suede is exposed on the back. And so I thought it would be cool to do this kind of a little wider um, with the ultra suede instead of skinny with the... Um, uh, with the Chinese knotting cord, though you could do the same thing with the CKC. So I did that. I'm going to show you this. I also did, I'm a big fan of doing this four strand braid. This makes a really cool just cuff on its own. This has four strands. You could do the same thing with five. Maybe I'll do it with five to do a wider cuff. Um, but these you could just start it instead of on a ring you could do something like this and you could just glue it right in these, um, uh, in these uh, uh, flat magnetic clasps. And then I started with just doing like this kind of, remember how in camp you do these lanyards? Well, I started it on a ring, but I also, we have these really cool, big, wide clasps like this. And I thought that these would be great um, as either a bracelet or like a cool um, kind of torsade, you know, or tor toque 
kind of a, a, a necklace going around, right? So you can do like the lanyard in the box style or in the, and I've done this before with different leathers um, or in the, um, in the spiral style. So I'm going to show you this. Um, so let me start by showing you a couple of, of different ones. Let me get here on the big screen so you can see this. Uh, let me, I'm standing up. I was sitting down, but like the other day to make the, the demo effective, I need to be standing up. So see, I have, I've clipped that in. And essentially what I did was I got all of my pieces together and it was in this order. I used a one millimeter cord right here. I got the cord that was my center, which was this red ultra suede and the cord that was going to be the cord that I went over the top with. And I did this yesterday. Gosh, I hope I remember how to do this. So bear with me here just a second. Um, I'm also going to um, clip this on the other side of the board with my other clip here. And so I call this the S braid, S for suede. And what you do is you come in and you lay this one millimeter cord in the shape of an S. See that? See how that makes an S? Now, what you do is you lay this over the top of the S and then you take the tail of the ultra suede and it curls under and comes up through the loop of the S. See that? And you want to make sure that your ultra suede isn't twisted. Mine is twisted. So untwisted if it gets twisted. There we go. Okay. So it looks like this. Here's the S. This one comes down over the top and up through that loop. And then you kind of tighten everything at the same time. Then I kind of come in and I tighten the S. Tighten the S. And pull on the ultra suede. Okay. To make it kind of even. Let me zoom in. A little bit more now that you've seen the 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 far away view I'm gonna zoom in and I'll do a close-up view let me take a bracing cup of a drink of coffee Margaret that's very sweet of you there are many things I cannot do including algebra algebra I cannot do algebra but I can I can do uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty dab hand at knots. And I'm a pretty good cook. Um, Cindy, this is a braid that uh, Drea sent me. It was an Instagram reel. It didn't really have a, a name. I'm calling this the S braid, S for suede. Um, so here I am, this one millimeter. I'm going to come in from the left make that S and that S lays over the middle strand of suede. Now I come in with my, uh, um, suede from the right, lay it across the S from the right to the left. And now I take the end of the ultra suede and I go underneath and up through the loop of the S. Okay. Like so. And 
and then I tighten that one millimeter. I tighten the top loop and the bottom loop. I'll do one more just a little bit faster. I know, I, I don't know why so many of us have trouble with math. I feel like all of my friends were either super strong readers or super strong math people. I was one of those kids. Katie was a strong reader and read way above her grade level, right? But struggled with math. Um, but you know what I didn't struggle with were percentages. I am really good with measuring and percent. I'm really good with fractions and percentages. And I don't know if it has to do with like measuring. I'm pretty good at measuring and stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. We're all good at something. My mom is excellent at math. My gran was excellent at math. I'm good at money math, right? Money math was good. All right, so there's that. Let's take a look at the back, okay? The back is also pretty cool, right? And I thought the way that you could finish this is you could use one of these barrel clasps like this. These are such great clasps. They're so tough. They're so solid. They go together so well. I don't want to cut this off quite yet, but if I bring all of these together like this, you could see you could glue all of these together like this, right? So I would cut this like this. You could even silk wrap it if you wanted to. But what I might do is this. This is what I'd do. I'd line this up one, two, three, like this, and I'd glue. I'd glue this, I'd glue this, and I'd glue this. A little longer than you would need for the clasp. And we've ascertained, we did the, the Michelle trick with this. Remember Michelle's Kumahimo trick where she came in and she, let's snap off the end of this toothpick. She came in with her toothpick and she made her little mark. So she knew that's how much she had to come in like that, right? So I would glue them together a little further, glue it, dry, let it dry, and then I'd come in and clip it exactly how much you needed to be left over. Then I'd glue it again into the clasp. I'd glue it beforehand nice and tight to make all of this nice and compact, right? So it's super e easy to get into this clasp so you're not fighting it, right? And I'd glue it a little bit longer. So when I cut it away, I'm not fighting with this. Then let it set reapply your glue or apply your glue inside of this clasp, clip it to your toothpick mark, and then glue it in. Then it'll be a nice flush connection. And won't that be a smart, um, really smart, right? Right? Oh, thank you, Millie. I am a good wingman when shopping. It is really true. Money math, uh, and I'm, I'm very good at uh, making sartorial decisions. It's true. And I have a pretty good analytical brain for breaking down um, processes. You know, it's just, I don't know. I think that maybe in the 70s and 80s when we were taught math in school, if you didn't show an aptitude for it right away, we weren't like... You know, when you had trouble with reading, you were put in like remedial reading right away, right? Um, and yeah, exactly. Kim Crawford, that's exactly right, right? 
That's exactly right. Because I was the one who was always counting on my fingers or coming up with alternative ways to get the correct answer. And I was always chastised for it, 100%, right? Coming up with my creative ways of getting the answer. Um, And so I think now, I think learning is a little different, right? Um, I think it's a little different, you know? So like with reading, if you showed reading ineptitude, you were put in reading classes and, uh, you know, your, your, your reading skills were tried to hone, but your, um, your math skills, your remedial math skills, they were like, oh, she just doesn't do math. Right. And if you were a girl and didn't do math, no one gave a rats, you know, what about it. Right. Right on International Women's Day. 4.2. So this is the four four millimeter clasp, Margaret. Off my soapbox, right? Right, off my soapbox. But I think those things have changed. But somehow I got the math that I needed and uh, I got the creativity I needed. Uh, let's do some braiding, shall we? Let's, let me show you how I do this four strand braid and let's then jump into five strand, right? And, you know, I don't know if you were like me, but um, yeah. And I promise my friends, I know we're sold out of it. The four millimeter, the five millimeter would work as well. It'll be a little bit bigger, um, but just don't smash your, um, your strands down as much right? And these are on, these are on order. We get these done for us. So we'll get these back in soon. Oh, there's a little spider friend over there. Hopefully he doesn't crawl into the shot. If he does, I'll put her out. Or if she does, I'll put her out. You stay over there, buddy. She's little. (laughs) You stay over there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we all have our but I so relate to you, Kim Crawford. That was, I think that was the, you know, the experience of a lot of, a lot of, especially girls, but you know, what are you going to do? We persevere. Um, okay. So this four braid, you've seen me do this before too. All right. So what I did essentially was up here, I got my two strands, found the center, went around the ring and started to braid. Okay. And I'm going to do it with, um, since I'm going to loop it around, it'll be a six strand. It'll be an even number of strands, but if you tie them, you can do an even or odd, but if you loop it around something, um, and maybe I'll do an odd because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to actually glue it into something like this. So, uh, okay. So let me clip that on. Okay, so I start from the left. And let me see if I can find a five millimeter cylinder, folks, just to make sure it fits. But 100%, it'll work. It's just a millimeter difference. It's not going to make a difference at all. Um, I will, um, I'll check it though. I'm sure I've got a five millimeter sitting around here somewhere. Um, So I'll do that before we sign off. So I'm going to start from the left and braid to the right. So I'm going to take my leftmost strand and I'm going to go over and under and over. So this strand where it was number one becomes number four, right? This one that was the second in command now becomes the troop leader, right? So now it goes over and under and over. Stem Hilly, that does not surprise me. You are a rare bird, math and science major in college with a minor in literature, just like my mom. My mom has both, both talents of math and science and literature. We 
we all have our our talents, don't we? I want I did love science. I read, you know, as a girl. Again, I sound like back when I was a girl, but I did a lot. I did a ton of reading. I was such a reader. I was one of those readers, those kids that took a book everywhere, right? So I, uh, I would read a lot of biographies. And our school librarian, I went to a small country school. I went to the same elementary school my mom actually did. It was Rucker School in Gilroy, California. And the Gilroy uh, Unified, uh, the Gilroy um, Library in Gilroy, our regular city library, uh, was really awesome. And our little school library in Rucker School was also awesome. And looking back on it as an adult, I didn't realize how cool our school librarians were. I checked out books when I was little. I read a book about Mary McLeod Bethune, who, if you don't know who Mary McLeod Bethune is, um, look her up. I learned about Mary McLeod Bethune when I was like eight. She was a pioneering African-American woman in education. Now, in a small country school, I don't know, it just seems unusual to me that a book about her life geared towards kids would be in our library. We had a book about Marie Curie and her life. Um, we had books. We had an Amelia Earhart biography that I read over and over. We had a Sarah Bernhardt biography. And our librarian, and she, it, we just had those books. And thinking back on it, I'm like, wow, that was so awesome. And, you know, at our Gilroy Public Library, we also had really just really great um, autobiography or, you know, biographies for kids about really interesting people, right? That we would, uh, that we would learn about. So um, I don't know. I was super fortunate and I still love reading about people. Yes, exactly. Bethune Cookman College. That's right. She was, um, yes. I read also about um, Helen Keller and the Transcendentalists. It was really super interesting. I don't know. I just loved it. It was really cool. And the, um, I'm going to prep my other one so you can see this while I keep talking about libraries because librarians are superheroes. Um, we have library science majors in our family. Uh, my former sister-in-law uh, was a library science major. Gran was uh, studying to be a library science major. And my uncle was also uh, library science. We are uh, so into libraries here in my family. Um, uh, but our Gilroy librarian back in the late 70s, she had really crazy musical taste. And she would get like really cool post-punk music that I didn't even know. I don't know. She had like Blondie albums and Joe Jackson albums. And, you know, so 1978, I'm, you know, however old I am, 12, you know, checking out like this music that's not being played on the radio. Um, it was really cool. Um, so it was so, you know, thank, thank goodness for these kind of, kind of crazy, not crazy, but 
interesting librarians who were like, you know what, let's put some interesting things out there for the kids to listen to. I remember I would check out those albums and I would listen to them like crazy. It was so fun. My grand would be all, honey, what are you listening to? I'd be all, I don't know, grand, but isn't it cool? Well, if that's what they're listening to nowadays, honey, I guess so. So funny. I'm trying to remember her name. I, her name was Lana Lonnie, I think. She may have been Hawaiian, I feel. She might have been Hawaiian or um, my memory is escaping me, but gosh, she was she was cool. She was also an artist. I think she was like a sculptor too, I think. Gilroy Library, those librarians were so awesome. So awesome. All right, so now I have five, okay? So let's do a quick five. Yeah, the Gilroy Library. Yeah, my mom was, yep, yeah, was part of the Santa Clara County Library. Yep, yeah, it was, it was, it was great. We were super, super lucky. Yeah, I'm going to see Joe Jackson uh, in San Francisco uh, sometime later this year, Chris and I are going. I'm still a big fan. He's awesome. All right, five braid. So let's do this real quick. So number one, over, under, over, under. Okay. And I'm doing this with colors that alternate a little bit. Over, under, And with, when you're doing this with ultra suede, over and under, um, you have to kind of, um, I didn't catch this up here, but I'm just going to keep going because you can always kind of cut that off. Um, you have to kind of make sure it's flat, right? Over, under over and under. There we go. That's starting to look right. Over, under, over, and under. There we go. And these are just kind of fun to add to stackers. You could do a section of this on a wrap bracelet. This might fit, you know, we have those ends. I don't have them especially to hand right now, but we have those ends that we use on the seed bead um, bracelets that we do. Or you could do it like we do on those traveler bracelets where we get the ultra suede and we fold the ends over and we make kind of a, 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 a self, you know, folding like this right over the top like that. Um, I'll get a piece of ultra suede and show you. Do you folks follow Michael Threets on, um, he was a Solano County librarian. He was the one who was bringing library joy. Uh, he's on Instagram. Well, PBS hired him to bring library joy now on Insta. Um, and he talks kind of about mental health and stuff. He's a really groovy dude. Um, and he, um, if you don't know him, it's Michael, it's M-Y-C-H-A-L Threats, T-H- I think it's his Instagram is th the numeral three RTS, I think. Um, but PBS just hired him, uh, which is awesome to spread his library joy, um, which is really, really cool. Um, hopefully he'll be working. Uh, we'll see him kind of do things like LeVar Burton with his uh, reading rainbow and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He's a, 
he's just, his library joy is infectious for sure. I just got my Fresno County library card. I can't believe I've lived here for two years without a library card. I'm kind of ashamed about it, but um, the little librarian who helped me, she was just darling. Um, she was all, look, let me show you everything that you can do with your library card. So she turned the computer around and she's showing me all this stuff. And um, I don't know, it was pretty awesome. She totally had the library joy. Our Fiber Arts Guild met at the library. Sorry, I was going out of the frame. Sorry, I was so excited about my library story. Um, we did a, it's on my Insta. We were working on kind of some special interest stuff and I was working on a jacket pattern. Um, but we met at the library in one of their uh, meeting rooms. It was really fun. Uh, yeah, since this ultra suede is a little thicker, you can see it's really easy for me to uh, to braid and grab on with it. Grab grab onto it. Doesn't this five braid look swell? Isn't it cool? Yeah, we have the bookmobile. The bookmobile would also come out to Rucker School. So we had a special, I actually had two library cards. I had my library card for the Gilroy Public Library. And then I had my bookmobile card. And the bookmobile would come like every two weeks. Two weeks, maybe every three weeks, I think. And it would drive out to Rucker School and I'll tell you what, that was a day. And you would have to wait, you know, all the grades would be scheduled. And you'd go, I don't remember during, like everybody would be scheduled whatever time. And you'd go like during class time. And you'd line up and the bookmobile kept your library card like on file. There was a file that they had. And they must have gone to like the remote schools, right? Because we were out in the country. So they must have gone to us. They must have gone to maybe San Ysidro was out there at the time. I don't know, whoever else they went to. Anyway, it was so, it was so fun. Then we'd get our books and then we would, um, then we could have reading hour. We'd have reading time afterwards. We'd read like at recess, I remember my my girlies, we would sit out there and read. Oh, that was fun. Rucker was a cool elementary school, for sure. It was awesome. Let's see if this is long enough here, because I want to show you how to glue something. Yeah, this will work. All right, I'm going to close this up. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm in a reminiscent mood because I'm thinking about all those great women who are my influences today on International Women's Day. Right? We're so lucky to have so many great women in our lives. Yes, Margaret, Encyclopedia Britannicus. My mom got me encyclopedias. I don't know. Ma, didn't you have to? I don't know. My mom spent like her mad money or whatever. One Christmas. I remember I must have been eight when I got my encyclopedias. I read through those encyclopedias. I don't know how many times. Mine were brown and black. I don't know what colors, what colors yours were, but mine were the brown and black edition. And I got the yearbook every year that I read cover to cover. I loved it so much. Let's do one more and then I'll do gluing. Um, okay, let's do lanyard style. Let's take it, let's take it back to camp. Where's my lanyard? Here it is. All right, let me show you. I'm going to show you how to do it here. Then I'll, I'll show you how to, how to start it. So I know, isn't this braid, this is really, this is my, 
favorite, this multicolor right here. And look at, you can see the difference with the five. I really um, was very uh, uh, precise in the way that I was braiding it. Um, so it really looked pretty nice here. So this is the five, this is the four. Okay. So this is the round right here. Okay. So let me show you, and I don't know if you did this at camp. Uh, I did our, my sixth grade teacher. I don't know. Let's just, let's just go all in with schoolhouse memories. My sixth grade teacher, her name was, um, Mrs. Roscoe, Lorna Roscoe. Lorna Roscoe was an amazing woman and she would have us do crafts and art and nature walks. And she was an amazing lady. She would take us on the bus. We'd ride public transit. She taught us how to ride public transit. I don't know. It was, I, you couldn't do that stuff now. She was amazing. So she also had us do lanyards. Um, it was great. And my, we made them and I made them one year. And I remember my grand until the day my grand died. I'm not kidding. In 1995 had this lanyard on her keys. Right. So, uh, so yeah, it's, they're kind of fun to do. So I'll show you how to start it, but there's two styles. There's this box style like this, right. And then there's this spiral style like this. And I think doing it in this ultra suede kind of elevates it. I've also done it. And you've, if you look back in some of the broadcasts, I did it quite a few years ago. I've done it with round leather as well. Okay. Like this. So doing it with leather really elevates it. I made my mom a bracelet, one of her favorite bracelets that I made her, um, that she still wears. Um, it was one of the ones that I made for us, uh, that I made on the air and she's like, I want that. So, um, yeah, so she has it. So the spy, let me do the box one first. Cause that's the easiest. Okay. So you arrange all four in the box, in the square like this, right? So I'm going to work with the blue. We're going to loop with the blue and we're going to loop, uh, we're going to weave with the green, loop with the blue, weave with the green. Stem Hilly's kind and generous comment just distracted me. That is very kind of you, Stem Hilly, to say. So we're going to loop over using the blue. Let those loops stand up. Do one away and one towards. Now we're just going to loop over like this and under. It's very similar, Andy, to the five. I've never done the five. I'm sure there are a million patterns for these now on the internet. Um, I, with the five spiral, I honestly don't really know how to do that one. Um, but you could, I'm sure you could do it. So see here how they're all caught like that. And then you pull it all together like this. Let's not forget, uh, our founder, the founder of what became beadshop.com was Janice's mother, Lydia Teichner who had her store, Antiques, etc., which started on Middlefield Road in Palo Alto, California, and then moved to Hamilton Avenue, also in Palo Alto, California. And Janice came on board in 1982, being a single mom and needed a way to... Uh, create her own small business so she could raise her daughter. So she and her mom went into business together, antiques, etc. became bead shop, the bead shop. And 
evolved, evolved, evolved. Lydia unfortunately passed away in 1992. I came on board in 1992, uh, later in the year after Lydia passed away. So our paths never crossed, but they've crossed in the cosmos, I think. Um, and then I was with Janice until 2002. Came back in 2016 to then, what was then, what had evolved into beadshop.com. And now the rest is history. Beadshop.com is a partnership run by two women, run by a bevy of women, Drea, me, Janice, Emily, Ellen, Claire, with help from Chris, who is a staunch women's rights loving advocate. So, yes, hundred percent. So there's the there's the box. So let's do the spiral. Okay. So we're going to turn this on its side. And instead of going across like this, we're going to go diagonal. So I'm going to turn the point like this. Okay. So I'm going to do the loops going at a diagonal this way and this way. Now, the important thing, my friends, for this, see how there's the loose end here, the loose spiral or the loose uh, loop here. This is the one that you have to start weaving over. So you start with the end, weave over and under that one. That locks in this strand, okay? If you don't lock this strand down, it's, it's, it's not going to catch, okay? And then you do the second one. You're locking that strand in, okay? So now, can you see how those are locked? And you tighten, and you can kind of see that's on the spiral. That's on the diagonal. Let's do it again. Okay. Oh, that's a nice question to ask, Millie. Some book recommendations. Let's see if anyone has some kid book recommendations. That they've bought for some of their smallest humans, small humans lately. Unfortunately, I haven't. Janice has a couple here. I'm gonna keep going with this. Diagonal, diagonal, weave over the open end. I'm gonna do a couple more, and then I'll show you how to glue. We'll glue this one into a bracelet. It's been kind of like old home week today on this broadcast. I don't know. Sometimes I get a little nostalgic on Fridays. We're a little looser on this, right? I think you can also go to uh, the Reading Rainbow site. I know that LeVar Burton has a bunch of great reading recommendations for all ages. I know that. I love corduroy. Yes, for sure. Let's do another one. Go on the diagonal. Point that diagonal at you. Here. Yeah, I love where the wild things are. Awesome. Great. I love it. And we'll weave, remember, weave over the open side. That's this one.
what am I reading lately? I'm reading, I usually have a couple of books that I'm working through. I'm reading one, it's about Bayard Rustin. Uh, it's essays about Bayard Rustin. If you don't know who he is, you can Google him, look him up. Very, since Black History Month just passed, he was my read for Black History Month. One of my friends has an essay about Bayard in his book. Um, I don't always read such elevated tomes, though. I was also reading a uh, one of the Bridgerton novels, <laughs> that uh, romance novels that Drea sent me. So, <laughs> so yeah, not always so elevated. Um, I have a good stack. I'm also reading one about uh, clothing in Jane Austen's universe. Pretty interesting. Um, you know, I need to get <coughs> on, on Goodreads for sure. Um, I have so many friends that are on Goodreads. Um, I agree. Ma Winnie the Pooh is one of my favorites. I love Mike Mulligan. I love this suggestion, Imagine Library for Kids Under Five. The Prince and the Pauper is one of my favorite books of all time. I read that when I was young. I really like Twain. Robert Munch. Oh. I have Barbara Streisand's biography on my book. I mean, on my book list. Um, yeah, Imagination Library, Dolly Parton. Yep, that's great. What's this? Oh. Yes, and of course, Anne of Green Gables, for sure. Love, love, love. Isn't that fun? Uh, okay, let's pull this. Whoopsie, I did it wrong. See how it comes apart? See that? I'm going to do one more and do it right. And then let's glue. You don't need to see me keep weaving this. You get the idea, right? It's becoming a little like watching paint dry. So let's move on. But I want to finish that off. Let's look at it from the side. And then let's move on, shall we? Okay, there we go. Um, oh, and I promised to see if I could find that five millimeter clasp. Let me find that, double check that that goes, and then let's glue. Okay. I really hope you like this ultra suede. Uh, we've got plenty um, of it in. Uh, it's something we'll keep into stock. If you're watching this later, and if for some reason we've run out of it or we're out of stock on something, just put your name on the list um uh on the list and we will uh you know you'll get an email as soon as it comes in so see here how you would just what i would do is i would just glue this down i would cut it kind of short like this and i just kind of glue the ends like this right over the top so they're glued and then I would just, I'm going to kind of fold that down. I would just, obviously we wouldn't have the ring there, but see how nicely this size fits into this clasp? Wouldn't that make, look at what a great bracelet that would make. It would also make a great, let me show you. Suggestions are still coming in fast and furious. 
look at how great that looks around the neck, right? I love it. I really love it. Yeah, I agree. I love Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I love it. Little Women is also on my top 10. I love it. You know, what I would do um, when I traveled a lot, I would have in my Kindle app on my phone, I'd have all of my favorite books that I had read over and over and over. I'm looking for that clasp. Um, so that I could just pick one in my app and I could open it up and it would be like hanging out with an old friend, right? So if I got like lonely on the road or whatever, I could read the chapter in Little Women when Meg goes to Sally Moffat's house or whatever, right? And then it felt like you were with friends, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a weirdo that way. But um, did anyone ever read The Five Little Peppers or was that just me and my mom? <laughs> so this is the five millimeter. Uh, let me see how this looks. I love The Five Little Peppers. So, um, so good. Yeah, see the five fits. Now in order to make the five fit, let me show you. Okay. What I would do, and I'm gonna cut this so you can see it, because I like the kind of substantial look that the five gives us. I'm gonna cut it right here. I'm not gonna glue it, but I'll cut it. <laughs> We've got a Five Little Peppers fan in the house. You either love the Five Little Peppers with a burning passion and write it in all caps like Patty did, or you have no idea. I love it. And saw the movies as well. Yes. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Love it. Margaret, exactly. We're going to shim it. What we're going to do is we're going to cut it here. I would glue it, maybe not even glue it. I would bend it over like this. I'd cut away as much as we needed to cut away. I'd make it a little more refined. But see, this kind of looks like a little bit of a hot mess, but let me cut a little bit more of that away. But you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? You could also silk wrap the end so it takes up a little more space. Who wrote? I think it was Margaret Sidney wrote The Five Little Peppers. I think it was Margaret Sidney who wrote it. They're so wholesome. Yeah, you could play around with that. But look, it, it fits on there just fine. Just fine. They're a fast read. I just love them. My mom and I love them too. I just, we love them. So the silk wrap, what we do, let me show you this. I don't want to go over yet again, but I'll do it with um, some, here's some Ceylon. We've got the uh, silk wrap um, skill builder, but silk wrapping is what we do to hold some of our pieces together. We do it to make a transition in between different pieces on a wrap bracelet. But see, essentially we make a loop like that and we come in and we wrap. And we're gonna wrap over all of this. It's gonna add a little bulk like this. Like this, keep wrapping. 
And obviously this is, I'm not measuring or anything right now. This is extremely slapdash because this is demo time, not real jewelry making time. I'm just giving you some ideas here to try and make all of this work. If you have the five millimeter clasp, if you don't want to wait for the four millimeter clasps, I'm going to come in, I'm going to clip that extra away. I'm going to clip that extra away. See, that's still a little, uh, a little long. I don't want to clip that silk wrap. So we would just wrap it long enough for that to fit in. But see how that silk wrap makes it a lot more, um, a lot tighter in there. See that? Okay. Let's get to gluing. Let's get to gluing this one because I want to show you, I've got some tricks to gluing this. Um, is this going to fit in here? I, I think it will. Let me see. All right. Um, what am I going to use? Am I going to use zap? I think I'm going to use zap again. I'm trying to decide between zap. Let me talk out my thought process here. Um, and I could, Mary, that's a good, um, I could glue around the silk wrap and then cut it to shorten because the glue would keep the silk wrap from coming undone. I, I could. Um, it would be better if I did a shorter silk wrap so I wouldn't have to cut it though. That would be my, that would be mine. Okay. That would be my preference. Uh, okay. Um, if I use GS Hypo, the gluing is going to be a little more flexible. If I use the zap, the zap is going to be a little more immediate. So I don't know if there's a wrong answer here. I think I'm going to use the zap and let's see how it turns out. If it's the dog's breakfast, then we'll, we'll know we would change. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut some of these away so they're shorter. Okay. So I can deal with them. All right. And I'm going to come in. And I'm going to kind of glue. All of this kind of tight together. Okay, so it tapers a bit. And I want to press down on it, but I don't want to glue my hand to the bracelet. Yeah, and I thought about that, um, Michelle. I thought about using GS for this and zap for the clasp. I thought about that too. So now what I'm going to do, because see, this is slightly smaller. See that is slightly smaller than this. Uh, my mom has a question about how does compassion suede react to getting wet? Um, I don't think any of this stuff loves getting wet, to be honest. Um, so I would say no to that. Let's figure out um, how long, how much goes in here with Michelle's toothpick trick.
So we've got about that much to play with, okay? So I want my gluing to end, you know, I want my, my, my clasp is going to come about right here. Okay. So I'm also going to give myself, that's my kind of, that's my line. The clasp is going to cover that line. Where's my lid? Okay. So I'm going to cut these. About right here. See, and even that little bit of zap that I put on there, that's holding it. Okay. So now I don't think I'm going to screw around with any more glue on there. I think I'm going to screw around with the glue on this clasp and both of the sides are equal. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead, get my zap in there. Oh, that was, that was not mindful gluing at all. Uh, I could tape it, Janice, but I think that was the worst. I need to remove. That was way too much glue. So see how I'm just, I'm just getting rid of that, putting it on a toothpick. That was way too much. Um, the masking tape might, see, look at that. I'm taking out like, feels like gallons of glue. There we go. Now I'm going to come back in and very mindfully add a little bit more. I think the tape might cause it to, um, to slip out, right? Because the tape might not permanently adhere to the ultra suede, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So there, it's in there. That looks good. It looks clean. Now, I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to shove, shove being the operative word, you know, before, no, oh, it's, it's gluing in there already. What I should have done before this was get my pliers and compress the ultra suede before I pushed it in there, but that's okay. It's not going anywhere. You can see my marks kind of right there, but there's enough in there. I'm going to just let it sit. Let's come around. <clears throat> I'll do it on the second on the second one, second side. Okay, so I can see here, right, I need to do a little more braiding. So I'm gonna put it there. Be careful not to, if you've got glue everywhere like I do, don't get it in any of the glue. Put your lid, for the love of all that's holy, put the lid back on your glue. Okay, uh, there. We're on the home stretch, my friends. Thanks for hanging in here with me. 
Let's braid it. <clears throat> yeah. Other side. Over. Under. Over. Under. I needed just a little more, so. Over. Under. Over. Under, then I'll check it one more over, under, over, and under. Okay. Clamp it. Now that I know what I'm doing, it's going to be a little faster. Measure it. I need two more. I do not want this to be tight on my wrist. I can't, I can't take tight around my wrist. It's not comfy. Though this ultra suede is nice and soft. I'm going to do three more. That's the beauty of this. If you have the clasp on one end and you've got enough of this ultra suede, and I know you're going to ask, Kate, how much ultra suede did you cut? I should have measured. I don't know. Cut yourself two yards so you've got enough. It's 45 cents a yard. It's not expensive. All right. Do one more. Okay, there we go. And this has three colors, you can see. All right. Now that's too big. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So, and this is just by the yard, Terry. Just by the yard. Okay. So, I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut these away. Now that I kind of have the feel for it, I'm not even really going to measure it much. I'm going to cut these away. I'm going to get my glue. Where did I throw my glue? Here it is. Oh, good, Margaret. I hope that this helped you understand the braiding. Yeah, a multiple, like a three strand braid sometimes can be a little confusing. But when you do it with multiple strands and you see how you're actually going over and under and over and under, see how I'm smashing that down with the pliers to really compact it? Yeah, and you could certainly weave this into chain. 100% you could. Great. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna actually be a little more mindful also about how I'm cutting. I'm gonna shave a little bit off the back 
so it's thinned out just a little. Smash it down. Get my clasp. Yeah, see how that fits in really nicely. Now I'm going to add my glue. Just get a little bit in there, not, don't go crazy. Spread it around. Just a touch more. See how I was a lot more careful with the second side. I applied what I learned on side number one. Yeah. And see how I cut that ultra suede too to kind of bring it in just a bit. This is a lot nicer than side one, but that's okay. We learned about it. Yeah. Um, Deborah, you want to use a nail polish remover that's only acetone. If the nail polish remover does not have acetone in it, it probably won't work. But if it's glued together so tightly, the acetone might not reach where it needs to be. So it might be a lost cause, unfortunately. So there it is. Look at that, and it really works with some of our other um, leather. Here it is, here's one of our, look at how it stacks with our innovators. Right? And our boho. Right, look at that stack. That's not bad, right? It's really comfortable. I love this five braid. Here's the four braid. But you could do this as thick as you wanted to. We've got the 20 millimeter, so you could braid with 10 across, right? But look at how nice the four braid looks too. It's a pretty good stack, if I do say so myself, right? Looks good. Okay, well, as usual, my friends, I went over a little bit this week. This week was all about going over, I guess. But thank you for joining me. Here's the four. It'll work up pretty quick for you. I used the Cool Luke clasp on this, right? You could use the Cool Luke clasp on the four strand too. You could use the uh, 20 millimeter. You could do a, uh, uh, this is the five strand braid. You could do a 10 strand to make it wider um, uh, and use the wider clasp. Try it out. I think it's great. And look at that stack. It's good times, right? So I hope this has inspired you to, uh, I don't know, work with the Ultra Suede. It's really inexpensive. Braid it up, my friends. Um, stay tuned to the newsletter. Um, next week, we'll announce the official sign-up date for uh, the bead retreat. Uh, remember, this weekend is the last weekend for uh, the buttons. They're going to go off, I think, probably Sunday at midnight. All the rest of the orders, there's only a few left to ship. Um, so everything that you've purchased through yesterday and probably even today, if you order a few right after the show, will get shipped out today. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you, my friends, so much. It was fun. I felt kind of, I don't know, sentimental, reminiscent, whatever today. I really appreciate you all being here. Without you, wonderful people, men, women, somewhere in between, wherever you fall. We really so appreciate you folks um, being here with us because without 
you being here, we would not be able to do what it is that we love. Have a fantastic and creative weekend, my friends, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.